Hey, Bushcraft family, back again with another video. Normally on Mondays, I would be doing my um, market review, but uh, they have yet to, to release one, so can't do one without it. So um, what I am going to bring you today, though, is something just as important. Um, it's about the our, our supply chain, our food supply chain. Um, many think it's broken or it's, sti it's still has its issues one being said um tyson uh the chairman for tyson tyson's food said there's a big it's it's majorly broken and with all the regulations and stuff that's been going on with uh the covid and stuff like that um it's it's hurting real bad and let me go ahead and switch this over make sure it switches yay it switched okay now we're going to go slide on down here a little bit further down the supply chain grocery stores are seeing shortages in supply leaving customers with reduced options and some cases no options whatsoever at the very end of at the very other end, the tens of thousands of animals that are processed daily have nowhere to go. And this this is still true. And um, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later. Try to show you how things go. But um, leaving farmers with very difficult decisions to make with the culling in, of millions of animals becoming increasingly likely. Um, pretty much, um, take, take for instance a pig. Pig is like eight months, give or take a, a month or two, from baby pig to grown up. So a lot of farmers that do this they set a certain well let's we'll put it homesteaders homesteaders will um, try to figure out when the best time to um, butcher their their animal um, so they try to make it to where it's not in the, the heat of summer and stuff like that or it's the fall or early spring or something like that to where it's it's not so, so it depends where you live and stuff at that nature too. But um, the processing places are so overbooked and some are getting, are shut down and some don't, just don't have the people working in them that they usually do because uh, government's paying us to stay home, basically. The majority of people, I'm, I'm, put, I'm saying. Um, so there's not that many people out there for the trade and stuff like that. So, and that means, say, your animal is ready to go in eight months, um, but you have nowhere to take it. So you're stuck with, what do you do? Do you? Um, keep feeding it until a spot opens up which is going to cost you more money and or do you just cut, cut the loss and get rid of the pig basically and you have to realize this on a big scale for the farmers that, that are out there doing this for for um, to make money off of the meat from the pig and whatnot and it's it's getting it's getting quite bad but um let's go go ahead and go down a little bit here um the food supply chain is broken said john tyson chairman of tyson foods the biggest meat company in the united states millions of pounds of meat will disappear in addition to meat shortages this is a serious food waste issue and that's what I was getting at. Their farmers are just just getting rid of their the, the animal because it, it just costs too much to keep feeding them. 
Farmers across the nations simply will not have anywhere to sell their livestock to be processed when they could have fed the nation. Millions of animals, chickens, pigs, and cattle will be depopulated. Um, and we all know the issues that JBS was having um, until they they paid their their thing. Almost a third of pork capacity in the country is down, with JBS closing another beef production facility on Sunday and Brazil the largest shipper of chicken and beef in the world is seeing its first um, poultry plant closed also so this this is beginning to be a major issue um, and then we have the <clears throat> the Department of Alcohol Alco you get it my my mouth is not working. Huh. Predicts that 2020, evidently they didn't come out with one of 21 yet. Well, I haven't found one yet. Uh, beef prices will rise by 2%. 2%, they said. Yeah, it's more more like 15 to 20% now. Poultry was will reach 1.5%. Um, pork will increase by 3%. Pork is actually still pretty normal. Chicken and beef has risen way up. And it's it's not going to stop anytime soon. Um, and he goes into talking about the, the packaging and all the, the stuff that they had to do for COVID and whatnot. Um, here's an image of... the supply chain basically this this is a rundown a condensed version of it i would say um, we have the production that's the farmer um, or the grower depending on what it is now one of the major issues we had was um, processing and distribution well those there's there's a, a few places in there that um Um, hmm. trying to come up with the easier words to say that won't get me in trouble. But there, there's a facility that um, the go it's government owned, and they put their stamp on cert certain um, like meat and stuff like that, and cheese and milk and stuff like that. If that place is not running at a hundred percent, say they're closed or they're just not taking in new new um, clients or whatever or new production coming in so you need that stamp to be able to sell to or to, to distribute it basically so right now we're being stuck in between uh, production processing and production ish areas right through here so once they get this the distribution that means the trucks and stuff um sends it out to um, grocery stores and restaurants and stuff well um this is where this right here if you can see see my uh, mouse rolling around right here this is where our issue is right now. Um, not to mention that everything's backed up. Not to mention that there are no workers because the workers are getting paid to stay home. Um, why should they go out and work when they're getting a paycheck for doing nothing? So a lot of our, a lot of our workforce is still at home. And until they cut that, that money off, it's going to be that way. So there's nobody to um, work in these these processing plants and things like that. And um, so they're having to run at half speed or they're closing down 
the meat processing plants and things like that. So, yes, I would say, for my opinion only, um, our food chain, our fruit, food supply chain is still broke. And it, until they, 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 we get workers back out there doing their work and not staying home collecting that paycheck that the government pays. I mean, you, you can't really fault people. It's just the nature that they're going to, if I can stay home and get paid, um, what I would have if I went out and worked. Now, there's some people are getting paid more to stay home than it would be for them to go out and work every day. So it's only logical that people are just going to stay home. But until um, our government is supposed to be helping people by paying them, um, and and now now that everything is up and running, a lot of states and everything, they drop them the mask and they open restaurants and stuff like that. Everywhere you're seeing, help wanted, help wanted. They're paying people to take interviews for jobs now. Um, it's never been seen before, stuff like this. Um, only the rich, rich people would get incentives to um, go apply at a, at a big corporate, uh, big league uh, businesses and companies and stuff like that. Now, McDonald's and... All these fast food places, grocery stores, and all these places are wanting people to to work. And until we get this stay-at-home pay, I don't see any of this getting fixed anytime soon. And then once everything is running to where it should be, um, the supply chain, the food supply chain, basically any supply chain, right now we need to get it fixed um because anything like this happens again um and with all the the cyber attacks and things that are going on right now one little thing breaks in our system and boom empty shelves again and right now if you go to the grocery store say walmart um a lot of times people will tell me oh we we see no supply problems at all our, our food supply is good here in so-and-so state. A lot of times, people really need to pay attention to the shelves. Um, when a grocery store starts running low on things, um, like everything, uh, what they do is they move things from the front or from the back of the shelf and scoot it to the front where it looks like it, it's a full shelf. Um, normally, like, like Walmart, if you look above the the shelves they have boxes of stuff that are are in case something runs out they grab a box and and restock it if you if you look at those shelves there's hardly anything up there and if there is it's nothing that people are are in need of basically so and if you was to go in the back where they keep a lot of the stock back there to restock the shelves and stuff, it's empty. Um, right now, they're just getting the stuff in, and as soon as it comes in, it goes on the shelf. There's nothing in the back um, to hold off. So if if something breaks and they come in there and people go nuts and start buying everything up, like all the toilet paper and stuff again, that's it until they get shipments back in. And right now, the trucking in industry is hurting for drivers, and it it just it 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 needs a re we need to re overhaul the the chain completely. But that's all I wanted to get, do f or get out there today. Um, like I said, I usually do the re weekly uh, market review. Um, it hasn't updated yet, so I can't really do it yet. Uh, as soon as that comes about, then we'll start doing that again. But I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, comment, all that stuff. And we'll see you in the next uh, next video. God bless.